Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to be getting into uh, Premiere Pro's color correction features. This is going to be a bit of a long and kind of uh, in-depth uh, explanation of color correction and using the scopes and uh, color correction theory and whatnot. So uh, everybody get ready to get into the comments and post a bunch of really nasty comments about how I should just get to the get to the point because uh, I'm not going to just get to the point I'm going to get in depth here so uh, yeah all right so what we've got here is I've got all my audio muted because I don't want to like really mess with audio right now but I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit color under the arrangements by the way if you uh, have some old settings in here where these are not displaying you can just go up to window go to workspaces and hit color as well it's the same thing as uh, this bar right here uh, but when you hit color there so when you hit color you'll notice it kind of uh, gets this uh, color arrangement laid out so you can start working on on uh, color correction and color grading. I'm going to move this down a little bit so we can just work with the video here. What we've got here is uh, two special windows that kind of show up is this uh, Lumetri scope panel here and then this Lumetri color panel over here. This is where pretty much all the changes are done to your clips here and what happens with it when you're in this color layout as soon as you start moving the playhead you'll notice it selects a clip. So now this clip is selected and it's getting ready for uh, changes to be done to it and then once you do a change I'm just going to do a quick exposure slider on this. I'm going to slide that over and show you what happens. I'm going to move over to the effects controls and you'll notice it has added uh, the Lumetri color color effect to my to this actual clip. If you got the clip selected, if you got the clip selected and you're on effects controls up here, it'll display all the effects that have been added to this specific clip that is selected. And what you'll notice as we move the playhead to another clip here, it automatically clips this, selects the clip that the playhead is over. And actually what it's done, if you go up under sequence, it has check marked this automatically for you. This layout has check marked selection follows playhead. This kind of makes things a little bit quicker as you're grading. You don't have to select a clip and then start grading it. You just move your mouse over, you move your playhead over clip and it automatically selects that clip and then you can start grading and look right now under effects controls notice no effect has been added but watch what happens once I start moving a slider up here and changing something there you go, it just added that Lumetri color panel. And, and all the numerical values of what you're doing in this panel uh, shows up under this Lumetri color effect right there. So watch as I drag this uh, back and forth, you'll notice my exposure is changing right there. The numerical version is changing right there. This is more the visual slider, making it very convenient to change this uh, the values numerically just with a visual, uh, just with this visual interface over here. So I'm gonna delete that effect right there. Just hit delete, I'm gonna select it and go to this clip that I had it on as well, and I'm gonna select that clip, select that Lumetri color, and uh, delete it so we can kind of start from scratch here. What I'm going to do in this uh, tutorial is first of all we're going to go through scopes, then we're going to go through the panel and how you make the changes, and then I will go into uh, the goal with color correction theory and show what you're going to try to do when you're color grading an entire project. So let's hit the scopes first. I'm going to move my mouse over this and hit the hit tilde so it goes full screen and let's talk about each one of these. A couple of these in my opinion are fairly uh, worthless. Um, if you go into something like DaVinci Resolve, uh, you do have uh, what is called a histogram. You do have a histogram inside of DaVinci Resolve, but it's a much better functioning histogram than the one is in, 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 in Premiere, in my opinion. I hardly ever use this histogram inside of Premiere just because I think it is kind of useless because it is this vertical histogram as opposed to this uh, a horizontal uh, histogram and uh, the DaVinci Resolve one actually shows the red channel, green channel, blue channel uh, where you can obviously see the differences on this. It shows a red channel, green channel, and blue channel and then your Luma channel like all meshed together and it's really kind of tough to tell what's what in this. So I'm going to actually, uh, to get rid of scopes, you just right click and I'm going to go down to histogram and uncheck it. Like I said, I think that in my opinion, I think it's useless. And I'm going to go over to this one and, and now you'll notice a couple other things here. One thing that I'm not going to really be covering is this right here. This scope here is called uh, what Premiere calls the HLS uh, vector scope. This is a vector scope and this is a vector scope. And once again, this I consider uh, it, uh, somewhat of a useless uh, vector scope. The ones that are most commonly used are these vector scopes right here, which is basically what the, what Premiere calls their YUV uh, vector scope. In the industry, these are commonly referred to as just a vector scope. They've added this uh, when they brought over uh, when they started using speed grade uh, years ago, which has now been uh, end of life basically. But they have borrowed the scope from speed grade. And once again, I hardly ever see this used in the industry. Uh, in fact, I've even done some research online, and I can't for the life of me figure out how this thing actually functions. I have a little bit of a disclaimer there, but I guess. 
guess I'm not putting enough energy into it. But you do not see this in the standard uh, color correcting so color correction software uh, that you see on the market right now, especially DaVinci Resolve. Sorry, I keep comparing it to DaVinci Resolve, but I'm going to right click and I'm going to get rid of the HLS vector scope because we are just going to be using the standard vector scope. So these are the three most, in, in my opinion, these are the three most useful scopes that you have uh, inside of Premiere Pro. Uh, you've got what's called your uh, waveform down here and you've got your RGB parade up here and your vector scope right here. You don't have to have these displayed on the screen all at once. You can right click and uncheck these or check mark them. But right now I'm going to uncheck my uh, vector scope YUV. I'm going to uncheck my parade RGB and we're left with our waveform monitor. I'm going to right click on this as well because I want to change the nature of this. Right now this is considered what they call an RGB waveform and uh, this is somewhat useful the RGB mode but I really like using the waveform for um, for luma levels or what's called tone levels. So to get rid of the RGB, by the way to explain RGB you've got red, green, and blue. When you're working with a video channel, when you're working with any video channel you have three different channels that are mixed together composited into one final image. You have your red channel, your green channel, and your blue channel, and these and the cameras that you use record in those three different channels and blend them together to create a and with different brightness levels in the reds and the greens and in the in the blues, you get literally millions of different colors that create an image. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to go down to waveform type and I'm going to tell this just to show Luma. So this is a typical waveform now, showing just the Luma channel. This is your brightness, your waveform under the Luma settings is basically just a, a scope representing tone or brightness. You'll hear several different uh, words used for that. The typical word in color grading is actually called tone. And tone is equals basically your Luma or brightness levels. And uh, pretty much minus the color. You don't need to necessarily worry about the color in this instance. We're working just with brightness. And if you move over here to the, to the Lumetri tab here on the side, you'll notice under tone you've got these features. Exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. These don't really deal anything these really don't have anything to do with color. Once again, these deal with tone. When you hear skin tone, skin tone is not is not referring to the color of skin. It is referring to uh, the brightness level of the skin, whether the skin is dark, whether the skin is light. Um, if you right click on this here, because nearly everybody has, and, and I know I'm going to get in some weird territory here, so please don't 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 come after me yet. But skin color pretty much has the same uh, color when you're working with color correction. Everybody has the same color that hue that's coming off of their skin for the most part because uh, they have blood under the skin and blood reflects kind of a reddish color. And we'll show this later as we get under the vector scope. Uh, under a vector scope, you'll see skin color and hue kind of going off between uh, yellow and red because that's kind of uh, the color of blood that's under the skin and putting forth that color. But then when you get into skin tone, skin tone is basically going to be how dark the skin is, how light the skin is, and that's going to be reflected in this area here on your uh, waveform. All right, to kind of uh, prove that a little bit, what I've got here in my timeline is a picture of two different people. We have... Yes, this person and this person. I want to show you a couple different things here. As we select this clip here, and we're going to just choose the skin tones. We're going to show our secondary color correction later on down the line. But right now, I just want to show a quick demonstration of uh, the reddish hue that I'm talking about that's in, in skin. I'm going to select this eyedropper here, and we're going to select the skin a little bit right there. Drag it across some of the skin, and I'm going to go to the color mat here. Show the skin that we're grabbing. Let's drag that out a little bit. Drag that out a little bit and get more of the skin colors. And look at what hue we've got here. The hue that's left over in the skin that's showing right there goes to a reddish hue right there. So we've got, um, so so the skin is a reddish hue. However, uh, tone deals with how dark or light the skin is. As we move over to the next clip here, let's select this one, do the same thing, grab the eyedropper, drag it across the skin here and select a range of the skin, go to our color gray, Go to our color gray here, and let's choose a little bit more of the skin colors. Drag this out and get more of that, and there we go. Look how we have a very similar skin there. We got some going off toward the, um, um, I guess, orange range. Sorry, but mainly red there. We got a red hue, kind of the, 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 the skin hue there. So when we are talking about skin tone, we are talking about darkness or brightness. We are talking about luma brightness levels, dark, uh, bright, uh, gray, kind of uh, not necessarily including color hue. Now how the uh, waveform works is this is basically a reflection of your image from left to right or from right to left. On this side you'll notice what's called an IRE, what they call an IRE scale. The IRE scale uh, basically goes from zero to 100. It goes up a little higher than that. 
uh, to show like overexposure, but but the, the kind of danger points are here at 100 and zero. Uh, let's move to a little an image that's kind of a little bit brighter here, and you'll notice when what we get is a larger spread on our contrast, but also uh, from left to right. So I'm going to move over to this shot where we've got kind of the overexposed sky right here. So what we've got on this scale here is we've got, as we mentioned, from zero to 100 on the IRE scale. Zero basically is where your darks exist, and uh, what happens at zero is details in your video signal disappear or they're kind of crushed out around uh, zero on the IRE scale. And as you move up to 100, uh, 100 is where details crush or, or disappear uh, on the uh, whites in your image. So the zero is your darks, the 100 is your whites, and this is also represents detail loss right here at 100. And now, um, kind of the mid-range, the best exposure level kind of exists in this area right here. This is an area that's kind of, uh, I guess you could say, a little more properly exposed. Uh, so between 40 and 50 are considered basically what, what they call your mid-tones. This is where your grays or your mid-tones exist right here. So as we look at this image to the right right here, what we've got is we've got this kind of sky that's overexposed and these mountains that are kind of look uh, they're, like they're properly exposed there. And uh, that's what most of this stuff is right here that you're seeing in that mid-range are these mountains right here. From the left-hand side of your screen, notice we have uh, a little bit less and it gets a little bit bigger over here. That's because, look, we've got a little bit of mountains. As we move over to the right, we got a lot of mountains right there uh, on your image. And this little peak right here represents uh, that sky right there that is an 80 IRE, so this is almost... Um, so the, the sky is almost completely overexposed. If it hits 100, it loses detail. So in theory, we should be able to restore a little bit of the blue to the sky by bringing down the highlights, which we'll, we'll get into a little bit later. And notice that this sky goes from here and moves over about two-thirds of the way over to the screen. And same over here, it moves about two-thirds of the way over, and it's gone. So that's how this sculpt works and how that's represented. And you can see as we play through it, how it changes and how it updates with the, the movement of the screen. As we have like a less sky or more sky, as this camera pans around, you'll see the changes happening over, reflecting, reflected over here on your scope. To move to this shot right here, without even looking at this, I can already look over here and see that most of my stuff, most of my signal is below 40 IRE. That tells me, just looking at this, that my shot is kind of overexposed. If we grab our exposure and we drag that up and we get that kind of in the mid-range there, now we have a lot of pixels that are in the um, in the 40 to 60 range and now we're starting to see a little bit better exposure. We do have some highlights over here which is probably on the branches showing a little bit of too much overexposure. Uh, we're going to show you how to fix all this stuff. As we move to our first clip here, once again this is a, a nicely exposed image. We got a lot of stuff in the mids there. Uh, some stuff in the darks which are kind of in the shadows and a little bit in the highlights which is kind of uh, the brightness color the brights on the on the rocks here so let's go to the next scope all right this here is called an rgb parade and why they call it a parade is it basically has three waveforms it has a red waveform a green waveform and a blue waveform this is exactly the same thing that we were looking at before brightness levels but this here from left to right of the red that includes that includes the full red channel and full waveform there for the red channel this is specifically for the green channel and this here is specifically for the blue channel so from left to right, we have in the red channel, we have a waveform showing the bright darkness and brightness levels of the red channel, the brightness and uh, darkness level in the greens, and the brightness and, and uh, darkness levels in the blues. And right now, you'll notice that all three of these look like they're fairly on the same level. If they are, then this is what is considered a fairly balanced shot, meaning the colors, when you look at it, should look accurate to what they looked like when it was actually shot. Uh, so the reds are probably being represented in this, the blues and the greens are as well. And as you change different things over here, as we add more blue to this, uh, you'll notice now we've got a bigger boost in the blues and the highlights and the reds have been suppressed and the greens are about uh, in, the, in the middle there and we have what looks like a fairly blue shot. If we take this the other way and go to the reds, notice it boosts up the reds. If we reset that and do the green channel, give this more of a green presence, you'll notice the, re the green uh, boosts up more. But as you get these uh, fairly even here, then you're going to have what's considered a balanced shot. And the shot starts to look a little bit more accurately color balanced. And uh, let's move to a shot here that maybe looks a little off color right here this shot right here looks like if you look at the image it looks like it's got a little bit too much blue in it uh, if we look at our uh, rgb parade here we got the red which is a little bit below the green and then we got the green which is kind of uh, boosted up in the highlights here and then you got the blue and looks look at the signal right here where the person's standing it's like everything's come in kind of pushed up on the blue including the highlights everything is like too blue in this shot so if we're going to balance this here and we'll show we're going to get into this in details later, I just want to show how the scope works, but if we remove some of those blues there and bring it down and uh, maybe bring the green up a little bit more. Uh, now we look at the shot. Let's look at a before and after here. I'm going to go to effect controls and turn this Lumetri color effect on and off. There's before. 
there's after, we have more of a properly balanced shot. So basically what this parade is being used for is showing the brightness levels again. So we are working with tone, but it shows how those tones are affected in each individual color channel. And uh, this is where we want to do what's called balancing a shot. And to balance a shot makes it look accurate, makes it look like the way it should when you shot it. Uh, which isn't always necessarily true because if you're shooting a blue sky, uh, the blue sh the sky should look blue, but if you don't have much but just the blue sky in it, then you are going to have a natural push in, uh, in the blue channels as opposed to the other two channels. But uh, typically speaking, when you're looking at most normal shots that have a wide range of colors and, and uh, images in it, uh, this is going to represent uh, more of, an, of what we call a balanced shot. Next, we're going to show the vector scope. And I'm just going to refer to this as vector scope. They call it the vector scope YUV, but this is more commonly referred to as just a vector scope. So I'm going to open up the vector scope and let's look at this. What a vector scope is used for is to measure a couple different things. Basically, on, on a base level, it does show hue. Uh, it shows kind of a color balance and hue showing which uh, color direction uh, you've got in this image. What this is is basically a representation of your reds, your yellows, your greens, your cyans, your blues, and your magentas. And uh, this is also used to measure saturation. And saturation is basically saying, well, okay, we've got red, but how much red do we have in this? We've got cyan, and how much cyan do we have in that? Uh, it's basically showing how strong or how intense those colors are in your image. So right here in the middle point, we've got what's called desaturation. At this point, uh, the image is like there's no color at this little mid cross section, little midpoint right here. There's no saturation at this point. And then as we start pushing out, these are going to be what we call recommended saturation limits. And out here are actually broadcast saturation limits for HD uh, out at these points out there. But these ones, are, it's rec Re Premiere recommends that you keep your uh, saturation within uh, this line right here. That's the recommended saturation limit point. So as we go out here and we grab our saturation and we boost it, notice how this spreads out and we get the saturation kind of starting to hit these warning points. I'd say it's sometimes about like the half point is starting to get a, into a, an area where your image is going to be way too saturated. But if we grab this and now look at the image, this is obviously too saturated and of course it's hitting those warning points. Uh, but as we grab our saturation and drag this in, watch what happens to that scale there. It just sucks in to the midpoint until it is completely desaturated and now this image here is black and white. So if we undo that there, double click on this dot and it'll return it back to normal, back to its neutral state. And we look at this here. Uh, so this image here has some heavy saturation points going off to the reds, a little bit kind of over toward yellow, and it has some going off toward cyan. If we look at that, the cyan is probably coming from the shirt and the reds are probably coming from some of the rock and uh, the background area there. And we also have that, that rope color there as well. So uh, so you can see some of the images, but the red does not have a he really heavy concentration. It has a heavier concentration between red and yellow, but that's like at a normal kind of saturation limit there. So this kind of tells you if you need to draw back the saturation on uh, specific items in a shot, and we will get into that. But those are the three main scopes that I use inside of Premiere to, do, uh, to really get an accurate uh, idea of what you're doing to your image and what the colors are, especially when it comes to matching shot and getting everything to kind of look... Uh, consistent throughout your uh, your project. You're going to use the scopes and your eyeballs to kind of to get a good idea of what what looks what's going to look good generally speaking. And as you start getting into color grading, you're going to notice things like uh, these wheels down here. But you'll notice that this wheel here, the color wheel, uh, matches the same color scheme as this vector scope. This vector scope is measuring colors based on uh, the red, greens, and blues, and then kind of these colors in between with the yellows, cyans, and magentas. And you'll see those uh, things like right there, you see the yellows and the reds, and up here you see the yellows and the reds, and and so on. So as you start grading and you start grabbing your midtones and dragging them over to the blues, you'll see your vector scope changing and, uh, and updating. And uh, as you drag them into the same direction, you'll see a push over to those areas there. 